It's another episode of The Brett Allen Show. Thanks for watching and listening. Today we are chatting with veteran actor Florencia Lozano of Narcos and, of course, One Life to Live. <laughs> My goodness. Uh, and yeah. uh, so many other amazing projects. Um, but we're here to talk about uh, her current project, uh, Life After You, which released on April 5th and is available to watch and stream uh, on demand, pay-per-view, and other major platforms. Uh, this is a very important and meaningful film, of course, and a, a definitely one that people should watch. Thank you for your time today. It's, a, it's an honor to be chatting with you. Oh, likewise, Brett. Thank you for having me. Yes. Well, I mean, we'll dig into your iconic career here, but I want to talk about this film because not only are you starring in it, but you also co-wrote it uh, and have been very hands-on in the process. Uh, and as I mentioned, the film talks about a lot of important things, uh, but I'll let you share. Can can you let our listeners and viewers in on, of course, what the film is about? And um, and then a, a two-pronged question, sort of what interested you in, in creating this? Um, so Charlene Gianetti, who's one of the producers of the, sh of the, the movie Life After You, um, is a journalist. And she had interviewed Linda Latterman, yes. whose son, Danny Latterman, um, died of a drug overdose, a batch of heroin that had been laced with fentanyl on February, I think it's 25th of 2014. And after talking with Linda about a book that uh, Charlene had helped her publish. Uh, the book was called Life After You, What Your Death from Drugs Leaves Behind. Um, Charlene was on fire about um, getting the word out to, to a larger uh, segment of the population. So she wanted to make a movie about it. She knew me as an actor and she wanted me to play Linda in the movie. Um, and I was so taken by her passion. Um, Charlene had no experience in movie making. You know, she'd never written a screenplay. She'd never produced a film. And it was such a, you know, um, passion project for her. Um, she had this, this fire in her, this need to get the word out about the kind of drugs that are on the street now, which are different from yeah. the, the drugs that were on the street when when I was a kid or when I was a young adult, you know? Um, there are drugs out there that can kill you after one use because um, fentanyl uh, and yeah. now car fentanyl, all, all kinds of different, different from, I mean, opioids are, are in a class all by themselves as it is. They change the chemistry of your mind. They, they are... Um, they are not to be messed with, but yeah. when, when you start to experiment with hard drugs and even now the fentanyl has been found in, in all kinds of drugs, um, you're really taking your, your life in your hands because a little bit of just enough fentanyl, which is not a lot at all can kill you instantly. Um, and that's, and that was the message that we wanted to get out with this film or, or more like the alarm bell we wanted to ring. It's like, kids, you need to know that um, you could be poisoned um, and uh, <laughs> and it's a real thing. Yeah, I think oftentimes, maybe for people who haven't really experienced anything tragic directly, uh, maybe they see or hear about it on the news whatever the case might be, it's kind of, it's unfortunate, but then we might find ourselves detached a little bit because we can't really relate on a personal level. That's why I think this film is important because it examines a lot of different sides to this situation and to this story, which obviously death is horrible, you know, and again, the use of the drugs and the fentanyl and the opioids, all of that. But then to kind of look at it from the side of this is what happens when someone's gone and yeah. the aftermath and the pieces and have to be put together 
afterwards. You know, it's it's very unfortunate. And I'm 47. I, I you know, I remember, you know, back in the day, there was like marijuana and cigarettes were kind of like the concern. You know what I'm saying? Like, and now I have a seven year old, and I look at it and go, God, it's unbelievable. Like, what's out there right now, and what he may have to face. Uh, and the world he has to grow up in. You know what I mean? So I, I really enjoyed this film. And um, of course, you did an amazing job. It's just really good. Oh, and okay. uh, I hope people get a chance to watch. I, I do too. Um, uh, one thing that you had said was about... Um, oh yeah, the, the, the film, as you said, it, yes, it's about... Um, drug use, addiction, but it's also speaks to, as, as you were saying, loss in general, you know, yeah. um, and sort of, you know, what, what is kind of inarguably the most devastating kind of loss, which is when a parent loses a child. Yeah. Because that's really not in the natural order of things. You're not supposed to, you know, bury your own child. Yeah. Um, and, the film examines how each member of this family deals with grief in a different way um, and how it can be incredibly isolating, alienating, surreal, um, like a, a waking nightmare, really, um, after, after this kind of loss is sustained. Um, yeah, so we tried to examine that kind the impact that it has and how it manifests differently depending on who you are. Yeah. I think you all did a really good job of sort of covering that. And, uh, you know, there are messages to it, but also really making it as authentic as possible. And I think that's important. I, I mean, I found myself relating to it on different levels um, as a father, you know, thinking to myself, you know, what would happen if this were my son, and even though the, the avenue might not be drugs necessarily, like you say, right. but just dealing with the loss of a child, period, and how yeah. you're supposed to continue on after that, right? And really yeah. live your life. Like, I can't even fathom it. Even having this conversation right now seems yeah. really unrealistic. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think yeah. we always say, well, you know, this is what I would or wouldn't do, but I don't think you really know until you've experienced it. I mean, loss period sucks. You know, I mean, just in general, family members, moms, dads, brothers, sisters, but a child, I imagine. Uh, and from what I can see in this film, it's just a different, a different level. You know what I mean? And it's just beautifully written. And if this doesn't win some kind of award somewhere down the road, um, it would be unfortunate because it's a great story. And I think it's stories like this that help other stories, the, the, the Marvel movies and the comic book films and the shoot 'em up action films mm -hmm. exist in the universe of entertainment. If you know what I'm saying, because it's, yes. these, are the, these are the films that are important, I think as yeah. a consumer of content, you know, and I would think for yourself too. I mean, my God, you've been in the industry for years, so you've been a part of so many different projects, right? So you've really seen how the industry has changed <laughs> for good or for bad, I guess, depending mm -hmm. on how you look at it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It is really um, a gift as, as an actor to get to do something that feels like it has a lot of meaning to it. Um, sure. And that meaning has to do with how it connects people. You know, our, our, our mission with the film is really to, to invite people into a place where they feel they are not alone. Um, they're, they're seen, their grief is valid and can manifest however, however it, it, it manifests. But that like, we're all, we're all humans and yeah. loss is part of the deal. Um, and especially coming out of the pandemic where we all have been through such a ride and so many of us have sustained such losses and are weathering such a sort of whiplash of um, insecurity and um, 
coming out into the world, you know, to just realize that um, we're raw um, and we have a lot more in common than, than we don't, you know, um, yeah. and we can, we can find comfort in just sort of acknowledging like, wow, it's, this is hard. This is really hard. Yeah. I think this out of everything that you could have experienced really made everybody be on the same level playing field as just as a human being, regardless of celebrity, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like nobody could have saw this coming or expected it. You know what I mean? To, to go, yeah. Oh my God, you know, what's going to happen. So yeah, I mean, it's all very real and very honest, you know what I'm saying? And uh, yeah, I know, you know, I think again, as I said earlier, we'll make sure people will put links to this so people can find ways to watch it because it's an important film. You know what I'm saying? And then there's just a lot of messages uh, on a very, very visceral level. Um, I said earlier at the beginning, kind of jokingly, but in a serious way, I mean, you've been in the industry for a very long time. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of people would know your work, obviously, on One Life to Live, uh, where you soap operas, I mean, it's a whole mm -hmm. other world as an actor. Um, uh, so different from what I've been told. I've talked to other soap actors who have been on. Sean Cannon recently was talking about going back and forth, you know, from television to soap operas to theater. I'm very interested. When did you get bit by the acting bug? And did you know that this was something that you wanted to do? Because for yourself, you experienced success quick and fast. Like things just from at least my perspective took off for you probably faster than most who might travel out to LA and Hollywood today to uh, try and make it in the business. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I knew very, very early on, um, you know, I, I have two sisters. They're older than me. My parents were immigrants and I felt like, I felt that it being on stage was a way for me to basically, um, exist. There yeah. was, I was sort of competing for airtime, competing for, because my sisters were smarter, they were further along. There was always a lot of conversation and I, I, I couldn't find a space where I could, um, my, my, my emotions were also a bit overwhelming to me. Sure. And so to find this very cool thing where I could pretend to be another person and in that way live emotionally my truth. It felt safe because I wasn't really, you know, I wasn't really, um, I wasn't really being a person. I was playing another person, but I yeah. could still, I could still, um, uh, experience what I was experiencing, even if I was using someone else's words and right. pretend to be another person. It, it was kind of a, a really useful survival mechanism actually for me. Um, and I just adored the applause and the affirmation and the love. Like I remember being on stage in third grade playing the, you know, the lead villain in the emperor's new clothes and like, the feeling, <laughs> I love it. The feeling of applause. Like I remember being that age and feeling this light come from the audience and like being like this, I, this is my addiction. Like I, yeah. this is makes sense to me. And, um, and so from that moment on, I was like, I, I will be a performer. Yeah. I, I love that. Like almost manifesting it verbally and saying this is something that I want to do and really just going after it. I think it's the old test of time. You know, it's like if you put your mind to something and you have the thoughts and you really work hard at it, you know, I think you have yeah. really good chances of doing it. Um, and it's just, I mean, you've been a part of other amazing projects to Narcos um, and just a lot of different things. One last question or so here. Yeah kind of encompassing everything that you've done, uh, including life after you, 
has there ever been any advice that somebody has given you along the way, whether it's just in life or in your career as an actor, that has really sustained you, uh, mm -hmm. Florencia, and kind of kept you grounded and kept you going uh, throughout the trajectory of your of your long career? Yes. Um, in fact, I was thinking about it when you were talking earlier, because, you know, I was really lucky to have parents who supported yeah. my dreams, you know, and I, I sort of took that for granted as a kid. And then I realized, oh, wow, a lot of people do not have that. Um, and, you know, my dad would ask me, you know, what do you love to do? What do you love to do? And I think, you know, that it's, it's sort of cliche, but do what you love um, is important because um, it's, I mean, it's in some ways it's everything because no matter what the result, if you get money, if you get fame, if you get work, as long as you are staying connected to what gives you joy, yeah. as long as there's a place inside that gets to play. You know, I had an acting teacher who used to say, you get, you get to do this when you, when you go to work as an actor and you remember, you know, no matter how much sacrifice, and there is a lot of sacrifice involved in this career path and in, in any career path, really, if you commit to it, um, commit to it because you have a passion, you have a need, you enjoy doing that work because that joy, that's the reward. Yeah. I mean, money is great, which comes with hard work and success, but obviously you can't go into this world looking to strike gold necessarily. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've had people say they did go into the business because of that and they've experienced it. But I, the general overarching thing I think is just, that's how you can define success is by doing something that you love and that you enjoy and that's fulfilling. And you've had a great career. I mean, you've done so many great things and uh, yeah, it's great. Well, I think I'm very excited for people to watch this movie again, life you. after you it's available for people to stream and watch everywhere on demand uh, on all the platforms and uh, Florencia, thank you for your time today. I appreciate it. It's been a pleasure chatting with you. Oh, likewise. Thank you so much.